Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Vice Chair Manning, Ranking Member Thomas, and members of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Uh, it's an honor to be here with you today and to provide testimony in support of Senate Bill 13, the Protect Trapped Minors Act. The bill makes a very important change to the current safe harbor law and eliminates the distinction between victims or minors based on age. Currently, the requirement to appoint a guardian ad litem applies only when the court specifically suspects human trafficking and if the charge is related to the child's victimization. <clears throat> this creates too many opportunities for young victims to slip through the cracks of our system of justice. Uh, Senate Bill 13 would first require a guardian to be appointed if the court suspects any prostitution related charge or human trafficking at any time, whether it relates to the current charge or not. Uh, and we do know because of the pathology uh, involved with uh, predators, um, a lot of times people are before courts on matters that are unrelated um, to the, the predation itself. We really should be in a position to intervene in these children's lives. Um, and a guardian ad litem is an important safety uh, technique. So Bill 13 also, and maybe uh, just as important, remove the legal distinction between human trafficking victims who are under 16 and those who are 16 or 17 years old. Language makes the elements of trafficking equal for all victims under the age of 18. Ohio is the only state that makes a distinction between these groups of minors based on age. Predators who prey on our children at any age should be punished equally to the fullest extent of the law. I'd like to provide some additional context by sharing uh, uh, some real cases from the Central Ohio Human Trafficking Task Force. The cases I'm about to describe are prosecuted under federal law because these children were considered too old uh, to be properly protected by Ohio's law. Local law enforcement officials that want to prosecute to the fullest extent of the law can't go to the courthouse in their county. They've got to go and beg the federal government to pick up the charges to prosecute under federal law. Let me give you an example. In 2015, the federal, the federal jury convicted Antonio Sibley of the production of child pornography, but was unable to reach a verdict on the additional charge of trafficking uh, of a minor. It was a hung jury. Sibley had harbored a 17-year-old girl in a motel room, taken explicit photographs of her, and advertised her for sale on the internet. Victor reportedly testified that she and Sibley, an uh, 38-year-old, had been in a relationship for two years. And I should say relationship in air quotes, because what person in a relationship takes new pictures of someone more than 20 years as junior and advertises her for sale on the internet? That's not a, if that's a relationship, then every slave owner had a relationship with their slaves. Through the federal law and our federal courts, this predator will serve a minimum of 15 years in prison on federal charges, but the state law is insufficient. In January of 2014, Valerio Valentine Alexander pled guilty to one count of sex trafficking of a minor in federal court. The 16-year-old victim reported that Alexander and a relative had forced her into prostitution. Alexander had taken suggestive photos of the victim and posted them in internet advertisements and forced her to meet a client in his apartment. As part of his federal plea agreement, Alexander is serving 15 years in prison for his crime. Again, we had to use federal law and law enforcement because Ohio's law alone, in all 50 states, we're the only one, the only one that draws a distinction. Just two months ago, this General Assembly took a much needed step 
to protect our children by voting overwhelmingly to raise the, raise the age of marriage uh, consent to 18. Now, marriage is considered a consensual commitment. And if we are to believe that all minors are too impressionable to give legal consent to enter into marriage, it stands to reason that all minors should be extended equal legal protection against people who <coughs> seek to manipulate and harm them uh, in a non-consensual way. I'd also like to take this opportunity to express my desire and my commitment working with the General Assembly to continue the meaningful reforms that have been made in this area. We must work together, work across the aisle to bring an end to this stain on our society. <coughs> I want to commend Senator Patrice Fetter for her continued leadership on this issue and introducing Senate Bill 13. Ladies and gentlemen of this committee, Mr. Chairman, please don't make our prosecutors have to go find a federal prosecutor to bring those cases. Ohio's the only one. You can fix this. Thank you. I'm just curious how we got to this place. Um, when we first passed the human trafficking laws about 10 years ago, um, did we at that time carve this out a page 15 and not put it in 1617? How did how did we ever leave those two out? And, and I don't want to speculate here because I was not uh, you know, I, I was back in the kind of prosecutor 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe that it's because our attitudes have evolved. Uh, just like the marriage consent bill um, decades ago, there was a sense that 16 and 17 year olds uh, are nearly adults, and that we need to be careful not to criminalize a high school senior who's dating a high school junior, and you know, somehow we end up you know, <coughs> seeing purity. Uh, I think that we, as we've learned more about human trafficking, uh, it's become evident, uh, as, long as, as well as human development, it's become evident that the state has an interest in protecting people under 18, that they have, uh, uh, how should I say this, that their capacity for consent uh, has some limitations, uh, that they shouldn't be permitted to, they shouldn't be exposed to responsibilities all making decisions. So we have an opportunity here today, I think, knowing what we know today to correct what may have been an oversight years ago. I'm wondering if we have any way of collecting data from the FBI on the 16, 17 old cases that would relate to um, Ohio not being able to prosecute. Is there any data that we could gather but um, it also supports our cause. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator Fetter, uh, I will look into that. Um, I suspect that any data will be <coughs> substantially incomplete um, for several reasons. One is that uh, many county prosecutors to the press of their business are simply going to use available <coughs> charges uh, under state code, for instance using a minor and nudity-oriented material. Uh, and that's hardly satisfactory, but uh, might be a charge that would lie. Uh, secondly, the cases that are brought federally are generally being brought through the auspices of one of the human trafficking task forces. And sadly, we don't have statewide coverage, really, uh, on those human trafficking task forces at this point, uh, they are, are local, and uh, my young, my office is working to try to expand that. So, but I would be happy to see what data might be there for that. Proceed. Thank you. Your testimony has been suggested in my testimony that uh, you need not worry that minors over the age of consent <coughs> who are engaging in consensual sexual relations seen as trafficking victims and that we need not worry that their consensual sexual 
partners in charge of the draft. All because, it is said to us, that the law requires a minimum of three people for prosecution. The trafficker, the victim, and the person buying the sexual activity for hire. Do you agree with that? Well, it would depend on the fact pattern and the statute that we're, we're using. Um, but I think for a different reason that uh, we need to be concerned about that. Uh, actually, two reasons. One is the fact that it's proof beyond reasonable doubt. And uh, if one hasn't had to bear that burden, it's so substantially higher than a preponderance of the evidence in a civil case. Uh, that's the first part. But the second is we're in a happy position, I suppose, being able to look at actual human experience. Remember that Ohio is one of the only 49, or is the only one among the 50 states that has this provision, meaning that it doesn't exist elsewhere. So let me ask you this. Have you heard in any of the other 49 states about an epidemic of people being improperly charged because uh, of a consensual sexual uh, contact? Uh, no, it doesn't happen. We haven't even heard a single case because it would surely be on, you know, one of these uh, cable shows that uh, spring up. Uh, the fact of the matter is that it doesn't happen. Uh, and knowing our prosecutors uh, in this state, I think beyond those two uh, factual uh, safeguards and, and, and that evidence, uh, I don't know of uh, any prosecutor elected or appointed, and I know hundreds of them across the state, who would ever take a case like that, would even consider presenting it to the grand jury. Um, we need to have some confidence that our prosecutors are, as the Code of Professional Responsibility says, ministers of justice. So from your experience, can you help me understand what are these schemes and plans? Look like it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and the answer is pretty broad. Uh, in some, uh, it ranges everything from a what we might call a street pimp uh, who's running one or two women uh, and using drugs and force to keep them in suspicion. All the way up to very sophisticated, organized, international uh, rigs. There was a study, I think, two years back uh, that focused on eight major American cities. Uh, thankfully, one of them was not uh, Columbus, uh, but uh, Miami, New York, Houston, LA, and uh, looked at how they actually, uh, these, uh, this, these organizations, actually move women around, or import them, move them around. So uh, the state authorities, my office, works with the federal government on those kinds of across state lines, sorts of uh, much more sophisticated uh, operations. Uh, and there's everything in between. The common denominator, though, is the connection of the buyer of sex uh, and the seller of sex. And that is occurring uh, online. It's using the internet to bring the two together. Uh, and that is a common nexus of virtually all human trafficking at this point. Uh, there's still some in our urban center, still some old school street walking type activity, but uh, uh, candidly, a great deal of uh, this. Organized crime is happening online. 